Wise Child by Monica Furlong Chapter 16 Summertime After Bialtana, I was full of questions. When the man in the gold cloak summoned me to the stone and I spoke the words, I began. I wondered, does it mean that I am special? How do you mean? asked Juniper. There were lots of other children there, but he didn't summon them. Why did he summon me? Somebody had to do it. Why not you? She was being very dense. Yes, but I felt as if I was the right person. Yes, you were the right person. Then. At other times, other people are the right person for something. So it doesn't mean I'm special? Everyone is special. It doesn't mean I am bound to become a Doran or anything? Juniper didn't answer this time, but went on stirring the soup as if I hadn't spoken. I want to be special, I said obstinately at last. So does everyone else, so we have to take turns. But some people are more special than others, aren't they? Juniper suddenly got extremely irritated. The really special ones are the ones who don't ever think about it, she said. I knew better than to pursue it any further. As the weeks and months had gone by, the herbs that had once bored me began, had begun to interest me more and more. I loved the circular garden with the two rows of spicy and sweet-smelling plants. I had fallen into Juniper's habit of idly picking a leaf and breathing the smell of lemon or aniseed, peppermint or sage. I knew now the common currency of our trade, the simple remedies of marigold and comfrey, peppermint and plum, the cures for cracked skin and wounds, for indigestion and constipation. Slowly, without too much encouragement from Juniper, I was beginning to learn about the drugs that relieve pain, those dark, dusty, and dangerous drugs that grew against the stone wall of the garden and were for people desperately ill or for people who needed to sleep while smashed bones were repaired. I do not know why they interested me so much, but from the time Juniper first told me about them, I learned their names and their properties, watched carefully to see how they were harvested and kept read about them with difficulty in Juniper's big books. Books. My curiosity about them made me a better scholar. Very gradually, Juniper had fallen into the habit of taking me with her when she went to visit the sick people in the village. What had once seemed so repulsive had gradually become intensely interesting to me. Sometimes we would discuss all the way home which herbs might help a skin disease or a case of infant croup. It astonished me that Juniper listened to my ideas as if I was a master of it all as she was. Why do you listen to me? I asked once, as if I knew something. You have a feeling for the herbs, she said. Her own feeling was of a slightly different kind. Although she knew and loved the herbs, it was as if her touch itself was the healing power. I saw people in great pain grow suddenly quiet and peaceful as she placed her hands upon them. When we went to Cormac's nowadays, I heated the bowls for the poultice and helped apply it. Cormac and I both believed that some love, some power in Juniper, was what made the new red skin grow on his devastated face. What is it that you do? I asked her once. Try to get out of the way of the power, she replied. Occasionally, I went to visit Cormac in place of her. We were friends now. Does Philan ever visit you? I asked him once curiously. Once or twice a year, he told me, but he did not look forward to the visit with any pleasure since Philan told him that his illness was all his own fault. Many years before, he and Philan had been loving brothers. Cormac, the younger, had been a fine, handsome man. 
whereas Philon was small and plain. Philon had gone to the monks to study for the priesthood, while Cormac had become a soldier. As a soldier, he had fallen in love with the young and beautiful wife of an elderly courtier. She had been married, as many young and beautiful women were, without her wish or consent. For a while, Cormac and she had kept their love secret. Then the courtier had found out, and Cormac had had difficulty escaping with his life. Within three months, the dread signs of leprosy had appeared. Philon had turned against Cormac. How can you bear it? I asked. I meant living alone, shut away from the village, as well as the hateful disease itself. I have become a hermit from choice, he replied. To begin with, I hated it and wanted to die. Now I have come to prefer it. The space, the silence, being alone with the plants and the birds and the great sky. But I still need love, yours and Juniper's. I was struggling with a Latin translation one day while Juniper was out on some long, unexplained ramble of her own, perhaps on the seashore, perhaps to the mountains. She needed to be alone from time to time. When a hand rapped long and hard on the white door, glad of the interruption, I jumped up and opened it to find Ranald from the village, his face full of trouble. Where's Juniper? Not here. We need her. Vitolf's had an accident. Vitolf was a Northumbrian who worked as a farm laborer in the village. We suspected he had come north to escape the consequences of some crime he had committed. He fell off the cart and the wheel has gone right over him. I doubt he'll live. I don't know when Juniper will be back. Maybe not till the, this evening. Ranald looked at me doubtfully. Could you come? You must know something by now. I felt a lurch of panic inside me. 